knows what tomorrow brings. I'm never gonna kiss and tell. Good morning, dear teachers. We are very happy to have you here as usual in this special Fridays in which we have prepared so many things for you so that you can not only learn, but also refresh everything that you already know and will at least have a wonderful hour here with us. And well, PBL, a term you've probably seen a few times as a teacher. But what does it actually mean? And how do you use it in your classroom? PBL is more than just doing a project in the way you might remember from your own school days. With this approach, students investigate and respond to authentic, engaging real world problem solving or answering complex questions with a deep and sustained attention. Join us to find how using PVL, teachers make learning come alive for students. And well, it is a great, great pleasure to introduce to you our fantastic speaker in terms of PVL, Gaby Suarez. Gabriela has been an English teacher for more than 18 years. Her experience also includes ESL and ELT academic consultancy supporting teachers and schools from all around the country. Gabby considers herself a passionate for education, and I'm pretty sure she is. She truly believes that working together, we can help making a meaningful difference on how education is received and delivered. Gabriela has also been involved in the research area and has participated as a speaker in international academic forums. But I will stop talking because Gabby is very ready to be here today working with you. So be welcome and don't forget you can use the chat box for whatever comment you want to write down. So Gabby, please welcome and the stage is yours. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sheila. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending. I'm, I'm really glad, first, to be here, and second, to talk about PVL. That, let's get started. Just give me a quick second. Okay. Can you see what I'm sharing right now? We will in a tiny minute. Now we can see it, Gabby. Thank okay. you. Perfect. 
just give me a quick second. There we go. OK, ready. Well, as Sheila said, we're going to start talking about PBL. OK, so this session is going to be to reinforce, to remember, but not only the concept, but also how to incorporate it into your classrooms. So I'm going to start with a quote. This quote, it's going to be very meaningful for the whole webinar. This this um, quote is from Jamie McKenzie, and it says, questions may be the most powerful technology we have ever created. Questions and questioning allow us to make sense of a confusing world. They, uh, they are the tools that lead to insight and understanding. What do you think about this? So we have been talking about asking questions to our students, make them start, you know, thinking by activate their brains using questions. So I think this is the perfect quote to a start. So let's get started. Thank you very much again. Now, we all know uh, that uh, teaching methods, Remember, whenever we are we are teaching, we need to have a specific method and we decide we have to decide which type of, type of method we, we use, right? So we all know that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of teaching methods uh, where we can choose from, right? Teaching methods are different techniques used to help students achieve learning outcomes while they do different type of activities, right? But teaching methods or the, that's the method that you are going to select to teach your students, it is very important because they can master the content of the course and also your students learn how to apply the content in particular contexts. So most syllabus or school programs is, uh, include projects, right? So projects we know that are crucial part of students' cognitive development and nearly every teacher uses projects at some point, right? In order to reinforce a lesson or maybe maybe give our students an opportunity to demonstrate what they have learned. So with this in mind that projects are very important, we can say that projects provide the students with the opportunity to learn at home because some teachers, they send projects home or at a school in a different format that they, than the usual lecture, activity, homework, or maybe an assignment, okay? So projects are an easy way to integrate literacy and creativity into learning but also into assessment. Projects are flexible. They can include personal or maybe group work. Projects are, well, they are not mandatory, but most teachers, they, well, they, we like to use projects. We like to assign our students with projects, right? So we can say that projects are uh, assignments that will help improve students' grades. What do you think? What do you think up to here? Do you agree with me? So projects can help students to improve their grades. Feel free to answer in the chat, please. If you have any comments, please let me know. OK, but projects have changed, right? I don't know if you remember the way if, if you learned uh, English in Mexico and maybe in the previous century, you can remember how projects were. So projects have changed a lot. We can say that in the past, we have this model of passively learning facts and reciting them out of context. So most of the projects or many projects, they were learned by heart. But now that is not longer. That is not longer sufficient. That's what I meant. That is not longer sufficient to prepare students to survive in this technological world, right? So solving highly complex problems requires that students have both fundamental skills, 
Do you remember what are those fundamental skills? Well, I'm talking about reading, writing, and arithmetic or math, right? But also combining this with the 21st century skills like problem solving, research, gathering, gathering information, time management, uh, synthesizing, synthesizing information, and maybe using technology. It has been a great asset when we're talking about projects. With this combination of skills, students become the managers of, or, or yeah, the managers of their learning process, which is guided and mentored by teachers, right? So it has been a little bit through years. But now, let me tell you. So we know as teachers that assigning projects projects is crucial to our students' education development, right? So we have mentioned some of the advantages of, of it, but uh, must, must projects have a specific purpose? And we should understand this purpose not only for our students, but also for, for the whole class. So that is the reason why Today we're going to talk about PDL or project based learning. So we're going to we're going to talk about its concept, but also we're going to talk about how to incorporate it into your teacher into your teaching practice. So PDL or project based learning is a learning method like many others we use in the classroom. So it is a method in which students identify real world problems and develop a solution. So since the mindset, it is this is a little bit different. So students gain knowledge and skills by working for a longer or a long period of time to invest and respond to an engaging, maybe complex questions or a, pro a problem or maybe a challenge. So we can think of those things. Now, there is like the formal definition, right? So project-based learning or PVL, it is an active student-centered form of instruction, which is characterized by a student's autonomy, constructive investigations, goal-setting collaboration, communication, and reflection with real-world practices. What do you think up to here? OK, so let me ask you a question. PDL or projects? What is it? Can you think of the difference? Can you think maybe of the last project you have assigned to your students? There is a difference. Yeah, of course, there is a difference between projects and project based learning. Primarily, and um, the main difference that we have to keep in mind, it is that project based learning is about the process, right? Because we're going to have our students performing a lot of different things before we get to the end. So it is about what they learn through that process, right? And, and uh, well, it requires uh, and a specific skill to develop in our student, right? So we need to tell them that they need to collaborate, that they need to collect resources, that they will organize work. And you, you as a teacher, you're going to work just like the program manager. You're going to be checking that everything is all set, that they are working together. And um, projects, most of the time, they are about the product that comes at the end. That is like the biggest difference that we can that we can see. Now, in order to make our students collaborate and share their ideas and experiences, activate their prior knowledge and everything so they can cope with this type of projects, well, we need to assess them. Most of the times they, we need to or our students need to be guided. But first, let's understand what is the difference between projects and PDL. OK, so let me show you this. So, uh, well, a project can, can be done alone, right? Maybe you can assign a project for 
I mean, in order to complete it at home and it can be done individually, right? PVL, PVL um, requires collaboration and, as I said before, teacher's guidance. Now, another difference that you can notice, as I said before also, a uh, project is about the product, the product that comes at the end of the whole project that you're organizing. PVL is about the process. Now, projects are teacher directed, right? And something very important, PVL, it is a student centered approach. So it is a student directed. Now, uh, all projects have the same goal. Most of the times when you assign a project, you assign the same project for the whole class, right? Here with PVL, the students make choices that determine the outcome. Mm -hmm. So far so good? Okay, now we can say that projects also have lack of uh, real world, world relevance, that uh, products are, are submitted to the teacher. Mm -hmm. In this case, PVL products are presented to an authentic audience. That's another important difference between one and the other. Also, uh, PVL is based in real world experiences or problems. So that's going to help a lot of our students, not only to, I mean, to complete the task, but also to develop skills for real life, right? So we also have uh, that projects, they occur after real learning mm -hmm. and PVL, it is real, real learning occurs through the project. That's why it's so important, the process. So the process, it is like the main character in here, in PVL. Okay, now let's see like um, the six A's of designing projects. Well, they have, well, they must have authenticity, academic rigor, applied learning, active exploration, adult connections, because they are going to be playing, but they are going to be learning how to solve problems, right? And also assessment practices. Now, PVL, uh, as you can see, as you can see, looking at the differences and paying attention to what is projects and what's the difference between this project or the ones that you have assigned and the ones that maybe are going to make your students be creative, be collaborative, to talk with our students, share ideas. So we can say that PBL, it is more than a strategy, much more than a strategy. Uh, PBL is an informed approach because our students, they are going to be working with information. So PVL instruction is based on the belief that students can and of course should make a difference in the world around them. And something that is so necessary nowadays. So positioning students as problem solvers who have the ability to learn content deeply and maybe impact their community leads to empowered students. So the rationale behind PVL, it's gorgeous. So PVL brings authenticity to the classroom in, and of course it needs to be connected with the problem that we pretend our students to solve, right? And that specific problem or challenge that you may assign to your students, it might be connected to the outside of the classroom and students might be challenged to, of course, collaborate, communicate, to think critically as they approach to the problem. So the process is that it is, it's very important because they are going to be acquiring and they are going to be developing these skills through the process while they get to the end. So these skills are directly related to the global competences and transferable skills. Have you heard about them? 
Have you heard of this UNICEF uh, transferable set of skills? Well, let me start, let me tell you that this this skills um, are are based on the well. Those skills are very very important nowadays because they are pretending to have all children and the world to develop to develop them. Right. So. As any other subjects, when we when we assign a project, we need to maybe take important things from other subjects and it has to be planned. OK, so a project based. Plan or a project project based learning a activity, it has to be directed, so you have to put together maybe writing skills, reading skills, listening skills, so they can research and they can cope with this, with these skills that we are mentioning. So also, PBL can be related to other subjects. So you can relate your projects or maybe to, I don't know, math, geography. So it can, it can be a population of many information for our students. But let me tell you about the UNICEF for every child. I don't know if you have heard about it, but it is something amazing. Uh, we have to be aware that children and adolescents today, they, they live in a world of challenges. They live in a world of challenges, but also they live in a world of opportunities, including new technology. Uh, I don't know, the changing market labors, uh, migration, conflict and environmental and political changes, right? To succeed with, with this current and future environment, all children and adolescents, need the, they need to, to learn, to learn in a different way. They, they need also to unlearn and relearn to find and retain productive work or productive content. They need to make wise decisions and positively engage with their communities. So this is about UNICEF. I'm talking about the, the skills that UNICEF tell us students or kids they need to develop. And teachers play a crucial part on all these changes. Like teachers in the 21st century, you know, we teach much more than language. Teachers nowadays or in the 21st century, uh, we also are responsible of developing skills. So it is very important skills that are very important the skills that um, the ones of uh, the global framework of transferable skills that I was talking about. So. If you have heard about it, it is very, very interesting. It is an strategic um, plan that it started in 2019 and it was called or it is called Every Child Learns. It is something very interesting because it started in 2019, but it will start in 2030 and it provides a shared vision of work on skills development. So UNICEF, this, this framework, it uh, guides country officers, policymakers, programmers of education to use and to try to develop these skills within different education and learning systems, resulting in the systematic, of course, the systematic development of these transferable skills that I was talking about at a different scales, of course, but also it will encourage life course, I mean for students it's going to be life course in, in encouraging and also it tells us that it can be adapted to formal and non in, in a formal but also in a non-formal way. So those are skills that we're also as teachers responsible to develop in our students. Those skills uh, are the ones that maybe you can use when developing your, your projects using, of course, PBL. So those skills are divided into two sets, foundational skills and transferable skills. OK, so skills that are needed for maybe uh, the foundational. Let me talk first about the foundational skills. They consist of literacy and numeracy. The skills that are needed regardless of employment aspirations, right? So 
foundational skills are essential for further learning, right? So we can say that the transferable skills are, I don't know, creativity, communication, problem solving, uh, all, all those skills that we need to solve a problem, right? Creativity, collaboration, critical thinking, the ones of the 21st century. So they cope with the skills of the 21st century. So such skills enable young people to rapidly adapt to changes. Maybe in, I mean, we're living in a world of changes. So everything is changing all the time, right? So whenever they are, they are adapted to changes, the, they will improve their chances of finding and retaining information and retaining also work. You might have been thinking now, yeah, we have heard about this foundational and transferable skills, but how can I develop those skills in my classroom? Well, you can develop this through the type of instruction. And we are talking about the type of instruction of PBL because PBL, PBL, it is uh, interdisciplinary. So real world challenges are solved all the time. So our students, they need informations, information, I'm sorry, or skills from using, for me, from using or mastering any other type of subject. In PDL, projects require students to use content knowledge. So it is important that we understand that PDL is also about the content, okay? So we're gonna use the content to develop skills. Mm -hmm. And you can use multiple other academic domains, as I, as I mentioned before, maths, geography, whatever you want to link your project to, but also, our students, they need to investigate and to be engaged with the project so they can have or they can become a uh, problem solvers. Now, PBL also requires the application of knowledge and skills. So students, most of the times, they first, uh, they first follow some guidance or let's say they first uh, have to follow some steps so they can engage in the process. So remember the presentation, the topics that you're going to select, it has to be very, very engaging for our students. So all this information I'm giving you this leads to a deeper learning for our students and that's like the main goal of any teacher, right? So the content, the skills development and the world application, it is like the basis of this of this type of instruction. So the, the students, they have to get a problem or a challenge as a project, right? So the creation of products maybe to communicate to, to present these solutions to a specific audience. So in PBL, the role of the teacher shifts a little bit from content deliver, right, to facilitate because you are going to coach your students on how to work on the project. You are not going to tell them exactly what to do. And maybe you are going to have different glances of the same project, right, with the teacher providing support only when needed. You don't need to be asking and you don't need to be, you know, all the times checking what your students are doing. Mm -hmm. So that means that PBL is a student-centered approach, as we mentioned it before. So far, so good. Up to here, any comments, any question? Nope. Okay. Now, as I mentioned before, learning center approach in PBL. That's something very important. Most of the times when we are lecturing, when we're teaching in class, uh, we think on the whole class, right? So we have to think individually, maybe, to cope with this learner or the student-centered approach. Now, students build on prior knowledge, experiences, and interests. 
What else can they do in PBL with this student centered approach? Well, students use primary sources of data whenever, whenever it is possible, right? Now, uh, problem solving, problem solving, they higher order thinking. Remember, the higher order thinking skills and, and lower order thinking skills. Well, with this type of approach and with this type of method, your students are going to be using higher order thinking. So that means they are going to be very, that means that they are going to be very creative. They are going to have a deep understanding of concepts. What else? can we see with a student-centered approach in PBL? Well, the students think about the process, assess their own work, reflect on what, they, on what they are learning, and set their own goals and objectives. Sounds challenging, but it is possible, right? So this is something very, very important, errors. Errors and misconceptions are viewed as opportunities of learning. So in this case, it doesn't matter if our students, they make mistakes, right? So because they are going to learn from the, their mistakes. So we have to place mistakes as opportunities for learning. Now, uh, multiple forms of, of assessment. Also, you can assess your students at different stages and in many different ways. And this is part of learner center approach in PBL. Now, uh, I'm going to read this. Let me, here we go. Now, in PBL students, not just, uh, PBL teaches students not just content, but also important skills in ways students will be able to function like adults in our society because they are going to be challenged with real world problems or issues. So PBL allows students to reflect upon their own ideas and opinions and make decisions that affect project outcomes and the learning process in general. So this is like the rationale behind all this. So we have like the reason we should use PBL in, in, our, in our classrooms. So this is what students will be developing and that would be the students role. Now, but you might be asking why? Why should I use or why project-based learning? Well, the third is that in many, many uh, educators, we recognize that the world is through projects. Now we're living in a project world, right? So I don't know um, if you, well, I'm, I'm going to mention a quote here from, uh, from Jean Piaget who says, knowledge is a consequence of experience. What does that mean? So in order to master something, we need to practice, right? So Knowledge is a consequence of experience. So in order to get to the knowledge, well, you need to live things. You need to be experienced in the subject topic that you are talking about or that you are learning, right? So today we live in a project-based world. If, if you haven't noticed it, yeah, we do live in a project-based world. Uh, I don't know, because you planned your weekend course, right? So you maybe an upcoming presentation or uh, I don't know, something that you're going to organize at a school, at a school event, everything has a plan. So you're planning what to do for the weekend, you're planning what to do, I don't know, later today. And this is the sprint behind, behind PVL. So we can see evidence of increasing popularity in things like making project based in this type of approach. So where students need experience to succeed, where students, they really, really need to be involved. So PBL prepares students for to be self-sufficient, creative and critical thinkers. That's that's a very, very important part because we are preparing them for the future, a future no one can possibly predict. So we need to provide our students with the skills they, they will need, like critical thinking. So they need 
they need and they must be able to solve any challenge, right? So maybe we're preparing our students for careers that they don't even exist, right? So because we don't know what is going on, what is going to happen in the future. So solving real world issues or so problems, things that matters is important to us now nowadays as adults. So it is an important for our students. So that's why we need to start making them think as not as adults because they, they don't have yet this, this uh, mitering thing in their brains, but we're, we need to make them start thinking on how to solve problems. And well, as I, as I mentioned before, real world problems that will help not only in the classroom, but also in their communities. Now, now let me tell you about let me tell you about the essential elements of PBL. Something that you must be aware of, right? So PBL, we need to focus or we need to start it with a big ended, uh, with a big open ended question, right? So they need to have a challenge or a problem for the student. I mean, to investigate about it and that at the end they have to solve it. So they have uh, another element, another important element. It is inquiry based approach. So they need to be stimulated to be engaged and also to want to investigate about this problem that you are presenting to your students. So we have we have to awaken their curiosity. They have to well, we need to make them be creative, to let them be creative, because most of the times we don't allow our students to speak up with their creativity. In this moment when they are working with PVL or when they are working with a project using PVL, well, they need to be creative. They need to be really, really creative. So this will bring students with important situations or real world situations that they will have to solve. We, didn't, we need to use the 21st century skills or we need to develop those 21st century skills. Remember that those 20, 21st century skills are uh, the four C's of the 21st century, right? That would be collaboration, critical thinking, what are the other two? Collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and can you name the other? I cannot remember the other. So critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. That would be the four C's of the 21st century. Also, they need to be, they need or we need to build a student's choice into the process, right? They need, they need to decide what to do during the process. So it is important that we guide them, but it is not a cooking recipe, right? That they have to follow a step by step. Here, they need to decide and they, they need to, we need to respect the, their choices. Also, PVL requires the students to present, to present problems, research the process, and have a specific method to, research, to, to solve that problem. Right. So, of course, we need or we need to provide opportunities for feedback and we also need to encourage our students. Also, the definitions and uh, project parameters may vary from school to school. In PVL, sometimes we use like experiential learning. We use that concept of experiential learning or discovery learning. So, those approaches cope with the characteristics of project based learning and clear in clear and in contact in con, uh, con sorry constant method pbl model consists in all those characteristics that you can see this here okay now now that you have seen the characteristics now that you have known what pbl involves let's check the benefits because it sounds great right to start or let our students you know decide on the process they are working on to solve a problem to use their creativity to collaborate many things but what are the benefits i'm going to have so 
Let me mention the benefits you will have using PBL. So PBL provides opportunities for students to use technology. Because remember, we're working with the 21st century skills. Now, PBL promote lifelong learning. Also, PBL connect students and schools in the real world. Because as I said before, we need or we need to challenge our students. Too often, traditional learning never ventures beyond the realm of the purely academic project based learning. Right. So using this type of approaches, we will connect the students to the world beyond the classroom and we're going to prepare also our students to accept and meet challenges that maybe this skill. I mean, I'm talking about the skill of accepting and uh, meet challenges. It's going to be very important for them when they grow up, right? So instead of short term uh, memorization and summative uh, regulation with project based with project based with project based learning students will have this touch that they are doing something important that their opinion it is important that the way that they are, they think it is important that they they have a way to help not only the classroom but also the world in general they are going to be they are going to have this sense of importance, right? That it is also very it is also crucial for our students. So the structure in PVL leads our students to build intrinsic motivation. Motivation it is crucial also for PVL because you're going to be giving the power to the student instead of just having them cope or complete different tasks, right? So we're going to be building intrinsic motivation because it centers students learning around a central question. Obviously, it has to be a meaningful question. It has to be something that can get your students attention, right? It could be a central question or it could be a problem or a meaningful outcome, right? So the students end up wanting to understand the answer or solution as much or more than the teacher wants them to understand it, right? So PVL provides opportunities for students to use all this technology, as I mentioned before. So they they can they can use it every day. So we're we're teaching the students from the 21st century. They love technology, right? So you can use different apps or they can even investigate what you do or how to use the technology to cope or to solve the project or the problem that you are that you are assigning them. They are familiar with it and they and they enjoy using technology, right? So as it happens, so students can be working on their project based on their project based uh, approach with those tools and maybe they can be happier when they are solving the problem, right? So students can find the right resources. They can find the right information. They can create products and collaborate more effectively if they use what they like. And I'm talking about technology. They can collaborate. They can they can even reach out to communities experts and maybe partners from from other states here in Mexico because PBL promotes lifelong learning, right? As the second mark you have in here, PBL promotes lifelong learning because we cannot we cannot escape from technology. So technology is present. It's used and also enable the students and teachers to reach out beyond the school building. And that's something very interesting. Sometimes we said, I don't I don't want my students to use technology because it has to be regulated, right? Yeah, I agree with that. It has to be regulated. But if if you are assessing your students on how to use technology, well, they are going to have to take control of their learning. And the first step it is to learn how to learn, right? So PBL connects the schools and students and schools with the real world, right? So it also will enable 
maybe using or through technology, maybe they can contact other schools and maybe schools that are working on the same project and maybe schools that are using also PBL, right? So students learn how to interact through technology. They are going to know how to interact with adults and also with organizations. So if you think about it, it is interesting and maybe they are going to be exposed to real workplaces using technology and they are going to be also uh, exposed to, I don't know, different type of jobs. So maybe they can also develop this uh, career interest if you are using this PVL to make them solve something about real world, right? So you can start working on projects that allow your students to have, I don't know, a concrete product as a result of their learning, but also show them the real world connection or the real world application of what they are or of what they have learned. Because sometimes, as I as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, sometimes we just pay attention on the product. But in here, what is going to give us this this uh, meaningful learning? It is the process and here. I'm going to show you a PVL example. Based on a real world problem. Remember I talked about like UNICEF and uh, this importance of developing this transferable skills that UNICEF is telling us that we have to start working well, well it started in 2019 and it's going to end up in 2030. Well, to PBL, we can address the most important international issues. That's something that you have to keep in mind. It is not just to make a project. With PBL, you can really, really address the most important international issues and also develop the skills that growing children need. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, all this information, it is, uh, well, I, I took it from this transferable set of skills, but also the reference has been made to both the United, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and the UNICEF Global Framework of Transferable Skills. So the Sustainable Development Goals make a uh, make a call, uh, a kind of a desperate call to all organizations and governments to apply their creativity and innovation in order to solve the challenges that we are having in the world, right? So they are they are calling every single person in the world to get involved with these important issues that we are having, like pollution, like education, like poorness, like many, many, many things. So whenever I'm talking about this, I, I need you to understand the importance of start thinking or, or teach or start teaching our students to deal with the problems they are going to really have in the future because it is obvious that our students or maybe younger students, they are going to have problems maybe with the lack of water. So if we start training them on how to solve problems and real world problems, maybe we're going to teach the student who's going to set up a real program or project to end up with poverty, for, for example, or to create a real, real important project that can give us the solution of real world problems. Because with this type of, of uh, approach, we can have our students to think in the future. We can create citizens who are concerned about their environment while learning English, of course. We can create a students as socially responsible people, right? So we have to be aware of the responsibility we have now because because we are we are teaching new generations, right? And as educators, it is an excellent way to have two birds, one stone because we're thinking on the future, but we are also teaching the kids we have. So all projects 
that uh, use PVL should be related to this. To the transferable skills and also the goals development of um, of ONU that we we are having this these problems now. Before I, I I continue with the many benefits of using PVL in the classroom, I will show you a project using PVL. How this this project might be might might look like, right? So in this case, we're using a third grade book. And as you can see in here, it is about social justice. It is a project, of course, it is a project using PVL, right? Uh, it is using, using, it is using many, many type of materials. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna show you like the final product. But as you can see, it starts with a discovery question, right? What are our rights? Instead of creating, a, I don't know, projects like the, like the, I don't know, maybe the, I've seen a lot of projects, but this one of the volcano, for example, I've seen it hundreds of times, right? It is interesting. Of course, we catch the attention of our students, but if we change it a little bit, as I said before, to real world problems, it's going to be very meaningful for the student and also it can be helpful for future problems, right? So we're talking about in this project, we're talking about rights. So one of the social development goals that is uh, mentioned here, here it is social justice, right? So using this type of materials, you can, you can bring real life context and technology through the curriculum through a, a project based approach. In here, I'm using a third grade book. It is unit nine, and as you can see, and the final product is this. So they have to create a poster about children's right, but it is not to jump from this stage to this one, right? So this is the ending of my project. I'm going to start activating prior knowledge in my students. I'm going to start providing my students with information and asking this question. I'm going to make them think. Right? What are our rights? So I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump from this to this. Right? This is what they have to deliver at the end. And as you can see, you can have many different type of posters because every single kid is gonna have their own resources. So of course it is guided. Everything has to be guided. I'm talking about an, a special book. So this is brain use. Uh, this is one of our, our books. It is one of the best books we have. So the students, they are going to be provided with questions, data, videos. They are going to have information about basic rights to grow up and be healthy according to different nationalities. So it's going to be a global project, right? So they are going to be exposed to discussions, games, role playing, of course, 21st century skills, brainstorming activities, literature, comparing and contrasting situations. Maybe they are going to, well, not maybe, I know for sure that they are going to be comparing, I don't know, maybe situations, kids situations in Africa and the ones that they have in their school's classrooms. Right, so they are going to be exposed to real literature, comparing, contrasting type of texts, questions about rules at different places and all this work with lead to the masterpiece. And the one that I'm showing you right now, it is the masterpiece they are gonna end up with, right? A poster about children's right where where under, well, students will understand the importance about this real problem, providing real solutions. So they're gonna be working from a specific period of time and they have to think and to come up with this. What do you think, teachers? Sounds interesting, right? So we're going to be just delivering the information to our students, guiding them on how to use them, but the final product, it's going to be their own. There is no way that two students can have the same thing because they are going to think in a different ways and also because of their prior knowledge, it is different. 
right? And the situations they have lived, it is also, they are also different. So let me show you the book. If you want to get to know about this, of course, contact us. We can, we can tell you. Uh, it is actually a book that is based on these real world situations. And they, they are, they, this book is going to help us create global citizens, global responsible citizens. OK, now uh, every unit of this book. Ends with this part. If you can see, it says here, see the change because we are preparing us our students to change, to change the mindset because the students will focus on how the problems identified through the unit can really be solved using their brains and their hands. And of course, by working in collaboration, right? So this book is going to help us a lot, but of course you can create projects from of your own. So if you can, you, if you want to use a book as a guidance, well, I really, really recommend you this. I hardly recommend you this, but if you want to create your projects yourself, well, that's also awesome. OK, so remember, uh, we are trying to cope all this information with real world problems. OK, so. Talking about this, well, this these are the sustainable development goals that this is specific specific unit of, of brain use uses. But let me keep going with the benefits of using uh, PBL. So PBL lends itself to formative and authentic assessment. Why formative and authentic assessment? Well, formative assessment allow us to systematically document a student's progress and development, right? Authentic assessment focuses on deep learning, asking, I mean, asking through questions. Why is it different than any other class you might be thinking, right? Well, PBL encourages this formative and authentic assessment by doing the following. It, it allows it allows the students to demonstrate their capabilities while working independently. So you can think or you can see the way your students think. It lets also teachers have, have uh, multiple assessment opportunities, right? Because you can have a lot of moments where to assess what your students are doing. It shows the students ability to apply skills such as such as uh, building teamwork, building to work with our other students to develop these group group skills, right? And the teacher learns more about the student as a person. And maybe that's something we need a lot. We need to understand the way our students act and think, right? It also helps the teacher to communicate in meaningful ways to the student or to the whole team, right? So being able to give meaningful, meaningful feedback. So feedback, it is very, very, very important because we need to encourage them. And maybe you have here, it is also something very important, so something very useful and meaningful for teachers because you can get to know how your students think and they might not think the way you, you do, right? And it doesn't, doesn't mean that it is wrong. So we're going to get to know our students in a deeper way. Now, PBL encourages students to be more engaged and to learn actively. Remember the quote that I said at the, at the middle, more or less, of the, of the webinar? That the, the one about experience? Well, the fact that students the, the fact that students are working on a project that has to be the key of uh, the key of solving a problem makes them more actively involved. If they just have to fulfill notes or they just have to do certain things, it's going to be, yeah, it is meaningful. But with this type of activities that they, they are going to get actively involved because they are responsible of having a solution of a specific problem, right? 
So a real project engage students not only physically, but also uh, in their minds and in their hearts. So it has a real world relevance of learning. The other bullet that I have in here, it says PDL builds skills for college, career and life. Of course that we can do this with PBL. So um, success in life requires more than knowledge and skills. And you might know this, right? So with PBL students learn how to take initiative, how to be responsible and build a good attitude towards it. So they learn to build their confidence to solve problems, to work in teams, and of course, to communicate ideas. They must do it, right? So, what more, which more benefits we can have? Well, PBL encourages imagination and creativity. I really love this one. Encourages, encourages imagination and creativity. So, when you need to solve a problem, of course, you need to have to be inventive and creative. So, with PBL, PBL often asks to solve world class problems. So think, think out of the box. It is necessary in PBL, not only for the student, but also for the teacher, right? Because there are not real guidelines or, or, or visual designs uh, that are most that are very important elements than project based learning. Right. So as a wrap up, I I'm going to show you like the characteristics, right? So the characteristics of PBL. How does it work? We have to be uh, to pay attention of the characteristics to understand how does it work in the classroom? I'm talking about in the classroom, right? As all lessons, it requires preparation and planning. It begins. It begins with an idea, an essential question. So keep that in mind. So you have to start your, your project with an idea and an essential question. Then when you are designing the project, uh, you will have to ask questions to yourself, right? So you will need to remember important things that uh, regarding the content you want them to approach, right? You will have to pay attention on the content and the relation or related subject that you want them to go with. If it has to be social, if you want to, uh, I don't know, relate a geography or history project, right? So content, it's very, very important for PBL. With all this content and the preparation in mind, what you have to integrate the subjects as possible into the project. Now, start the steps for implementing uh, PBL, and we will end up with this. So uh, steps to follow if you want to implement this, this uh, approach into your lessons, right? So number one, it says to start, start with the essential question. The question, we call it essential because the that, that's the question that will launch the PVL lesson. It has to be one that will engage your students. It is greater than the task at hand because it has to be open ended and will pose a problem or situation that they can tackle. You know, uh, knowing you have to be very specific in here because they have to know there is no only one answer that we can have as many answers as students in the classroom. Right, so there is no one answer for that specific and special question. Then you have to design a plan for the project. If you don't want to use a book that uses this PVL methodology, OK? So the second step it is to design a plan for the project. Uh -huh. It is essential that you have in mind which context, context uh, will be addressed. You might involve the students in planning because if you ask them questions while you're planning or ask them what they prefer, it's going to they are going to feel ownership of this project. And when they are uh, actively involved 
in decision making, they work better. You know, you know that. So select activities that support the question and use your content to fulfill or to complete the process, right? So integrate as many subjects as possible. So you can use different type of materials. You can use technology. You can bring them, I don't know, maybe books or articles to read or let them, let them uh, research on the web. Whatever you think, well, you, you are the one who knows your students, right? So create a schedule. It is important to have a schedule of, of this, right? So you have to design a timeline for a project, for all the components for the project. So you have maybe to realize, uh, to, real, to, to have changes to the schedule. You have to be, to be aware of that. So as all your lesson plannings, it, it, it has to be, or it might be modified, right? So you have to be flexible, help students realize that a time that when time comes, they will have to finish doing this, right? So they, knew, they need to use their thoughts, findings and evaluations to do this. Monitor, monitor students, it is important, yeah. So you need to maintain control without preventing students from taking responsibility from their work. So maybe you can follow these steps in here. So you have to facilitate the process and you have to encourage your students. They need to feel that you love working with them, that you are very interested in the project, that you are waiting to see their masterpieces, right? Also, you have to assess the outcome and of course to evaluate, but not only the activities and all the uh, structured things that you are that you are assigning to your students. What I really recommend you is to assess the experience. So to ask your students how they feel, to maybe uh, I don't know, give them a palm on the on the back so they can feel that they are working with you, right? Now, just to finish. Just to finish, let me tell you what are the roles of the teachers in here using PBL. So um, here you are the planner, right? So before you assign the project, you need to investigate a little bit so you can have them guide. OK, so with the knowledge, with the knowledge that you can investigate or the knowledge that you that you own, well, you can guide your students, but just guide, right? So help students to define problems or questions, but not tell them what to do, right? So they need to think, they need to be very creative, right? So model, give feedback, provide scaffolding tools, right? Can be, uh, tell them which tools they can consult and Observe, observe as much as you can because you're going to be assessing what students are doing, right? So also maintain flexible working environments. So if they are working in groups, of course, they need to be polite to each other. They have to work, work uh, in a smooth way. Up to here, do you have any questions? Just to finish, just to finish, I would like you teachers to tell me two things or one thing that you learned today, just as a, as a wrap up. Is there any volunteer over there to tell me something that you learned today? Come on, don't be shy. Oh, here, oh, here we have, we a, have comment. a comment. Gabby, Gabby that, that says that, that they learned. Learned. The difference between doing projects and working on projects. Excellent. And, you know, they see like a new uh, perspective on, on how to integrate all of this work into their classes. That's what the comment says. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comment and uh, thank you again. <laughs> Any other comment? Well, teachers, thank you very much for attending. 
Oh, Gabby, thank you for this awesome talk. Personally, I made some notes that I will start implementing with my classes. Just awesome. on Monday, I'm eager to, to go back to school so that I can start. And sometimes we have this idea that following this project based approach is, is kind of overwhelming. But now, as you explained everything, it seems like so easy to handle that I'm pretty sure that teachers will be very ready to go for it. So thank you very much. Thanks and well, so. remember teachers that and directors, uh, coordinators that DS space was designed for you. So please feel free to write down any comments or questions using the chat box. I will be here reading them for Gabby. And well, Gabby, I don't know if you want to to tell them something else uh, in order to wrap up this session again. So any any special tip or like your top three about PVL, what would you say to, well, to this? To enjoy it, to, en to enjoy the process. I mean, this is something that you can enjoy with your students and also you can have a lot of fun with your students. So whenever you are implementing something, take Take the, the, the fun out of it, right? Be be creative with your students and enjoy it. That's that's like the best advice I can give you. Enjoy what you're doing with your students and have fun. Thank you very much, Gabby. Well, in the meantime, they decide to write down some questions. Hopefully they will be doing that soon. I want to share with you, with all of you teachers, our satisfaction survey. For UDP, for Grupo SM, it is highly important to know your views, to know how useful these webinars may result to you. And of course, we are very open to listen to uh, ways to improve and to approach more your teaching practice. So I leave over here the QR code so that you can scan it. You just need, if you have an iPhone, you just need to, to open your camera and then click for a picture and then it will take you to the satisfaction survey. If you have Android, you just scan the code with a QR app and then it will guide you to the survey. It's something really, really short that will take you no longer than a minute and 30 seconds, I guess. So please go ahead and feel free to express your opinions over there. We will be very happy to listen to them. Yes. OK, so as you are. There answering the satisfaction survey. I will be reading one question. That appears over here for Gabby. And I will also set Gabby on screen. So Gabby, the question says over here, uh, is it possible to use this approach with little kids like uh, third grade preschoolers or first grade elementary? And what, what do you recommend me, says this teacher? OK, awesome. That's an excellent comment. Yeah, absolutely. We can use this approach with kindergartens. Yeah, it is. Remember that uh, preschoolers are the best on exploring and, uh, you know, having these advantages of exploring. They, they are also they also get uh, amazed with all this real world situations. And remember that PVL, it is about the process, right? So with your students, of course, they cannot read. They cannot maybe write but they can investigate and they can read images, right? So the process, it has to be different, of course, but you are going to provide your students with the resources they can use in order to explore, right? We can have a specific projects for different grades. And of course, if they're, I mean, kindergarten students, maybe you can you can provide them. Let me think of a of an example of a project for kindergartens. Using visual literacy. Right, so maybe a a reading project with your students. 
So you are going to provide information through visuals so they, they can understand as, and as a final product, they can tell you three lines or four lines what they learned. But remember, specific questions, then you have to guide them through the end. Right, and in this case, well, it, it should be with images, not with, um, with something else. I don't know if I have answered your question. Yeah, he, this person already replied. Thank you very much for your reply. It was very clear. And other than questions, we have very positive comments that I want to read for you. And they say, congratulations to the speaker. Everything was so crystal clear. Thank you. And we have another comment over here that says, Thank you very much, Gabby. I'm your fan now. <laughs> My so that's pleasure. That's a very nice comment. And then we also have thank you, lots of thank yous and congratulations. Thank and you. this last comment says thank you very much for this very illustrative talk. OK, Gabby, so there you go. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much on behalf of, of UDP and Grupo SM. It was definitely a great pleasure to have you here. And well, we hope we can have you more often because they really loved your talk, okay? Thank you very much. Okay, well, so now it is time for me to announce the following webinar that we are having, which is actually the last webinar for this uh, Consejo Técnicos that we have uh, throughout the school year, right? So we will be very happy to have you. Uh, the name of this webinar is Everybody Learns and well, the focus is inclusive education. So we will be very happy to have you there. We will be looking forward to seeing you. Remember that all of this space is um, all of these spaces, all of these webinars, everything that we do are especially thinking on you and thinking on trying to be hand to hand, shoulder by shoulder in your everyday practice with the best of the intentions and with all our heart put over there as these type of, of sessions and webinars are being planned. So, the only thing I can say right now is thank you very much again. Thank you for being here. And we really, really hope that this beautiful webinar that Gabby prepared for you has been of absolute use. Well, so on behalf of Grupo SM and UDP, University of Data and Publishing, we want to thank you again for being here, being part of this great webinar and we are having this again at 11 o'clock. If you want to invite somebody, feel free to do it. And thank you very much. I won't say goodbye, but see you soon. <laughs>